quarter at 5.03 this evening. If we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, we'll move on to item C on the agenda, which is public comment. Um, as a reminder, we offer both in person and virtual comment, um, always allowing um, in person comment to go first. Don't believe we have anybody with us this evening, so we'll go ahead and open it up to virtual public comment. We have what, one attendee? Let's see if Mark is not. He can raise his hand. He's all set. So um, we will move on to item D, which is minutes. Uh, so can I get a motion to approve the attached August 17, 2022 minutes? Second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Um, we'll go on to item E, which is correspondence received 816 through 9 to 12. So we did have three pieces of correspondence included um, in our packets uh, for review. Um, we're all set on responses for all three, but just want to make sure the committee had the availability to take a look at those um, and, and see correspondence there. Um, I also take the opportunity to remind anybody who uh, is joining us today or listens to the recording later, please by all means use the, the correspondence form on our the Home Media Rail website for contact with us. Great opportunity to ask questions, get updates, um, or just uh, get, you know, ask, ask anything you want about the product. We're more than willing to field those questions. So please take advantage of that resource. So we'll move right on to item F, which is reports. Um, first order of business is uh, chair report. I don't have anything specific this evening, so we'll move right on to town council liaison report. Um, so the, we had a meeting last night. So the two things that, well, the main thing we discussed yesterday is we had a, uh, a presentation from Croc and SLR on a third bridge uh, crossing across the end of Monte going over. Doesn't affect anything in this project. Uh, because that time frame would be at best three to five years out and then could be more. Um, we're just in the meeting processes. The other thing is on our next meeting, which is two weeks, um, which would be the 27th, we're going to hear a presentation from the 1928 building committee. I know Chris is here, so I won't give the details, but um, they're looking to change the scope of work after diving into some of the costs associated with uh, keeping various portions of that building. That presentation will be, uh, like I said, on the 27th. Um, so why don't we go on to go any questions? No. All right, uh, Board of Education liaison report. Started school, very exciting. We have our next meeting. Questions for that? All right, thank you. Um, unfortunately, I was unable to attend the meeting first. I was out of town business, but um, in terms of uh, the, the uh, Silver Country Society did present the, the various options to the committee uh, in terms of uh, the 1928 building, 1928 building plus, um, and it's sort of taking a comprehensive uh, holistic view at it with, in terms of impact on the site in conjunction. Costs um, and architectural challenges and business challenges. The decision was made to um, bring, uh, eliminate what is referred to as option two, but the more expansive project, and essentially present to the town committee, a uh, town council uh, option, an option that will hopefully result in a recharge to uh, more a more scaled down version, which is essentially the 1928 building plus an additional a uh, small amount of additional space. So that'll be going on at the next meeting on September 27th um, for consideration there. And I would encourage people to uh, dial in that make your attention. Any questions? Okay, 
questions for Chris on that? Obviously, more to come. I'm assuming after the town council meeting on the 27th, we are scheduled to meet on the 28th immediately following, so we'll have some details at that point. Anything else in addition? All right. Um, item five, owner's representative report. Sure. So um, a couple things going on. We um, we're going to need to schedule a working group. Uh, the working group has not met in the uh, in the last few weeks. So next next Wednesday we'll schedule a working group to review a few items. Um, the we have uh, created a finance committee or resurrected the finance committee. Uh, that group has met uh, twice and will continue to meet monthly to review invoices, um, pay requisitions, and any potential change orders that come to the table. Uh, the, we are working on our uh, first state submission uh, for reimbursement. So uh, we've been putting together, gathering all the invoices and everything else that uh, we need to do to submit that, um, to submit that reimbursement uh, request. Uh, the professional team continues to meet uh, weekly. Uh, our big focus has been obviously on um, getting the bid, uh, packages out, which did go out. Um, so uh, we and ONG can report a little bit on, on the progress there with RFIs and things that have been coming in. Um, the, uh, we did receive um, all of our information now from all our third party contractors, so our vendors, uh, consultants, right? So our structural steel review, our um, HVAC review, the, the um, uh, professional engineering review, all of those comments are in and being incorporated, uh, have been incorporated into the documents. Richard will explain a little bit more on the timeline uh, and where we are with getting out uh, an addendum to, to the bidders. Um, the, uh, really, other than that, we, we received our, our OSTA um, reports. I'm not sure if we reported out on that last last meeting or not, but uh, and uh, ONG has put together a preliminary construction schedule for us, uh, which we are uh, currently under review now. So uh, we do have an ed spec review meeting um, coming up this week as well. Uh, so we'll be uh, working with the uh, Board of Ed to finalize the ed specs and uh, get that out in front of the, um, uh, the, the Board of Ed to vote and approve the revised ed, ed specs to, to meet the program. So uh, that's really about uh, everything I have uh, for an order to approve. Just like, um, I don't know if this premature out of line with the schedule, but at any intel from point. Uh, so good question. Um, the, uh, the the majority of the bids have come in. There's still um, some that are uh, scheduled out a few days later. Kind of remember, we're staggered with uh, larger um, uh, bid packages out front, and so literally they've just come in. I don't know if OMG wants to give an update. Yeah, literally they came in. Uh, I would say probably 75 80 percent of bids came in yesterday. Um, so we're still that is pretty much <laughs> yeah. yeah, we haven't we haven't started our scope reviews. I mean they are kind of raw numbers at this point. Uh, we are tracking slightly over, but at this point it's really hard to report on anything until we start to go through it and then analyze each bid. So we should have a lot more concrete information by the next time we meet. Anything else? Mark or Mark? All right, we'll go to our tech report. Great, good evening. Uh, I guess I have five points I'd like to bring up this evening. First of which is to introduce Archana Pai. Archana is an architect with our firm. She has been involved throughout the entire design, uh, schematic design, design development, now construction documents phase. Uh, she's a project manager. She's interacted with all of the design consultants, structural, mechanical, etc. She's thoroughly familiar with all of the plans that were produced by our office. She was one of the leaders of the team that was put together. Um, you'll see more and more of Arjuna. She um, participated in the uh, pre bid opening that was held by ONG in the auditorium. Um, she's done this kind of work before. And so, um, this is the committee, as well as OMG <laughs> at that end of the table, and we have CSG over there, um, and we tend to sit in the same locations. We do, right? Uh, that's, 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 that's human nature. <laughs> they are liars. 
And Devin, you should become very familiar with, he has access to all of the files. I told Devin that he should include you on the future invitations and communications. Um, when you are officially here, you'll get your own uh, identification. Uh, well, welcome. Welcome to the team. We appreciate all the work today, too. So we're excited to have second item is um, we did receive an email from Kat about communication that she received from Jay Tulin about the status of the Institute of Human Centered Design commentary. Remember that we got commentary from them at earlier phases of the work and the most recent commentary was uh, during the construction documents phase. Uh, we received a total of 70 comments. Uh, about half of them uh, could be very simply answered because they're just clarifications or confirmation that we've already taken care of that. Um, their report uh, was compiled in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, Michael did that, I think he did that, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, it was joint. It was joint. So their uh, Excel spreadsheet was forwarded to CAT, uh, and there are three columns. The first column is which identifies ADA requirements that needed attention, they thought needed attention in the documents. The second column is what they call good practices. It's not required by code, but based upon their overview of um, inclusive design was, was the term that Jay Tulin referred to about their specialty is in inclusive design, which is not only what's required, but what is forward thinking, what's happening in the world of accessibility, what's happening about making sure that no one is discriminated against in projects. And so that's why the Institute for Human Centered Design was brought on as an additional consultant. Um, and then lastly, the third column is our responses. Uh, to uh, their commentary. Um, there are a couple of items that are out of scope. They made comments about, for instance, accessibility in the field, in the football field, and also in the concession stand. We reminded them that those areas are out of scope. They're excluded from this problem. Um, so I did take a peek at the attachment from correspondence that is included in the packet. And um, Jay refers to some issues in auditorium. I can only find one comment in the, uh, so I'm not sure how we derive those areas of concern. I think you said auditorium and labs. That's location of the special address. Okay, so um, I saw one comment here from auditorium. Uh, the lab comment is has to do with clearances. We have confirmed that those were uh, adequate, and so I think we've responded to the comments. The auditorium comment had to do with a handrail. Um, So I think I think we it was a good process. I think we learned a lot in the process, and it's been I think fruitful. Okay, third on my list is um, preparation of addenda. So now that we have the pre bid meeting uh, and we received RFIs from potential bidders during this bid period, um, we're going to be compiling the first addendum or first packet that we will give to you and how you incorporate that into an addendum uh, is up to you because that's one batch of information from bidders. Another batch of information is from what Mark referred to as the uh, independent engineering review. This is uh, what DTC did uh, in reviewing the plans and specs. Sometimes we refer to them as the ready check. Uh, it's a proofing of the documents. So, those responses may result in some addendum. And so that's going to be the second batch of information that's been going to be sent to you. Um, how are we doing on the preparation of addendum? Because that's something that Archon is doing as well. 
So, uh, Laura, you'll see, uh, have already started adding comments on the first. It's, it's actually a live document, uh, the prepaid RFI Excel spreadsheet. So, by tomorrow uh, noon, I will be sending you the, the spreadsheet with the responses. So, all the changes to the drawings and specifications would be added, included, to the, included as addendum one. So, that's going on on Friday. Right. You're going to get to it on Thursday. Yeah, that no, the Thursday is just spreadsheet. So we're on track for right. to show you. Um, and then the last item I wanted to bring up is I received in the mail. Actually, I did not receive it in the mail. It was handed to one of my partners with Igo Hart and said, I think this goes to you uh, because it didn't have my name on it. Um, but it's from a sales rep uh, representing some Skylight manufacturers product. And um, you're probably going to get this sort of stuff too. And what I think it is, because it's not explicit, what I think it is, is a request to consider their product for Skylights. Now, there's a formal process for making submissions as equals, and there's also a deadline for that. You don't want to be receiving this when it's too late. So I'm going to give this to you, and then you decide whether it's complying with the requirements for making such submissions. I would urge members of the committee to get such correspondence, just hand it to the professionals, they'll determine whether it's an appropriate submission. That's the last thing I wanted to comment on. Any So why don't we go right on to the construction manager report? All right, well, I'll update where we are with bidding. So we did go out to bid on August 31st. Um, again, as was mentioned, yesterday was the pre-bid meeting. Uh, the professionals were all there. Sam, Sam attended as well. We had about 36 trade contractors there. Companies represented. There was more people than that, but there was about 36 companies represented, which was, that was pretty decent. Um, you know, the interest for bono pre-bid meeting is usually to, to look at existing conditions. So we, we expected all the site and the demolition contractors, but not necessarily, you know, finishes, but there were a couple of finishes contractors there. There was a flooring manufacturer or a flooring contractor. There was an acoustical contractor. So it was, it was neat that they showed up. So that was good. So it was a pretty good turnout. Um, we're still on tracking on schedule as far as when bids are due. So right now the bid, Due date is September 29th, and I do warn that since Torrington just came in on Tuesday yesterday and the rest of their bids are coming in, I think either later this week or early next week, we need to give the bidders on Farmington for Farmington enough time. Like they were just all working on Torrington, so I need to make sure that they all have sufficient time. Everybody has limited resources, so um, just, you know, I know I'll have to delay at least a week because right now it's just like basically two weeks between the two projects. So. We'll, we'll push it off probably a week. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it with this Friday's addendum or not, but if not, it'll be in, in next week's addendum. But that's still tracking with where we were on schedule. So we we're planning on scoping critical trade contractors top, starting October 6th, which implies that the due date of like October 4th or 5th. So, you know, we do have a little bit of, of wiggle room in there um, for getting the bids in. So we're still on track with that and looking for owner approval of the critical phase two contracts somewhere on or about October 19th. So at your meeting that's on the 19th is when we'd be looking to present the critical trade contractors for phase two. So just to give you kind of a horizon of where we are, are with that. So your meeting is on the 5th, I think, right? Your 5th and the 19th, are you two meetings? We are the 12th and the 27th. We can add one. Okay. On the 19th. Okay. All right. So right now you're the 12th and the 26th? Every other, every two weeks. Yeah. But if, if we might have, you know, I mean, it went off, but we probably, probably didn't do a standard piece, like I think somewhere in there. Okay. So you have the 12th and the 26th, the Wednesdays? Yeah. Okay. All right. Just so yeah. We can add. Okay. It's better to add, and, and you might. And then not right better to add, add exactly. Yeah. 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 Because who knows? Maybe the 12th, I won't need anything.
by then and I will meet you on the 19th, you know? So better yeah. yet, better we'll to add it on. Yeah. And that's basically where we are. Again, as was mentioned, we're getting um, lots of, there's lots of interest out there. There's lots of bidders interested in this project. There's lots of bidders that have been waiting for this project. So we have lots of interest. I have some archives I'm backed up on, so I got to get those entered into the log. But, um, you know, we'll be issuing those responses on Friday. And as far as the agenda goes, as, or as far as the invitation to bid, I know you guys got up on the website and you're going to place in Harper Current. I didn't back check that. But it, has, that was, it was nice. Okay. Yeah. So everything's up on the website. Everything's on the town website. Everything's on the state's portal. So we're all good. Um, I think I sent out the invitation to bid with the link if anybody so chose to want to look through all that stuff. So. And I'll just make sure Joe's, I'll give Joe a heads up about Friday so that they know. And we can update on our website. Yeah. Yeah. That's all that I have. So I'll, I'll let Nelson update on the phase one. So, so the phase one uh, quick update uh, work is winding down. Uh, there is still construction taking place behind the fence, but that's winding down as well. Uh, we had the landscape architect out yesterday. Uh, we Walked uh, actually the last week, walked the site, and uh, this morning they went to the nursery to pick out the trees. So, the hole that uh, we reported on with the recent rains, um, uh, the trees, uh, the elms were, del were delivered to uh, the nursery, and they're going to start showing up tomorrow. So, uh, most of the plants will be planted uh, by the end of this week. Uh, we're working with the architect uh, on punch listing. There's not a lot to punch list, you know, on the early enabling, but um, that work is winding down and um, it's going to be quiet for, for a period of time. But um, so I have on the schedule that by the first week of that, the, the next big thing is we're going to be bringing in the job trailer. Uh, they're working on the electrical, uh, Eversource will be connecting the power. That'll be the first week of October that will set. So, uh, we have right now we're communicating with the school. We got interviewed by the school newspaper <laughs> at some point in time. Awesome. So, uh, they're good, aren't they? The newspaper, they're, uh, they're sharp. Well, we're trying to coordinate on yeah. We're trying to coordinate yeah. time. Be prepared. Be prepared. There'll be some, there'll be some, uh, some very, very good questions. My, my daughter's not crazy that I'm going to be able to. Oh, I've had it many times over. Trust me. She'll be excited when she's six years old. Okay. Any other questions for Laurel or Nelson on timeline? So, Basically, we're, we're in a little bit of a waiting game here, but still exciting. We should all be excited of where we are, how far we've gotten on this project, that we're out to bid. This is, I mean, great progress. So thank you to everybody. And uh, looking forward to next steps. So that's exciting. All right. So let's move on to communication subcommittee report. I mean, I'll do a quick overview of what we talked about. So um, we did actually do a quick conversation on a update to the website, which I think is, is important for the entire community to understand, which is um, the effort to improve our overall communications with the surrounding neighbors moving forward. So um, we have established a, to Sarah Cat and Devin, established a uh, distinct web page or, or page with on our website that is dedicated to the surrounding neighborhood to get additional information um, on the project um, when they need it. Added to that was also one of a contact form at the very bottom um, to be able to start to build a distribution list for the neighborhood, the, the members of the neighborhood to, um, for us to be able to do folks communications to them um, on an as needed basis. We're, we want to be very clear on this. This is something that we're going to work on as far as engaging with the neighborhood making sure they get um, you know, a, a time of communication on things that really will impact them directly. So um, that's a communication plan we're working on moving forward. Um, I think it's a critical part of kind of what we've done to date, even pre-referendum, the communication, and um, 
So we'll probably gather you might need some help from you on you know getting some word out there on the Facebook page to get out and get your name on the list to do those kind of things um, to help us with that communication just making sure we're staying in touch. Uh, we don't anticipate there being a ton of communication right now um, as far as impacts, but as we really start to engage in, in um, the construction work, we'll certainly that will wrap up. So um, that's something that we're going to go ahead and, and put out. I don't know when we're actually going to not launch that right now. The page has it launched. Yeah. So we'll, we've got a few minor modifications that will go out there and then we'll start soliciting uh, the creation of that distribution list for the neighbors. Uh, we talked about that. We also talked about um, groundbreaking. Uh, so we're starting now to, to really think about how do we plan this and then figure out um, uh, we haven't planned, we haven't um, determined a date quite yet. That's something that we're going to kind of wait a little bit on to make sure that we understand the best timing for that. Um, so that's something to come in the future, but we have um, an agenda and basically an outline the event that Ira has put forward to us. So we're going to start taking that, putting some uh, time frames around that uh, within an event, um, you know, time. So what we said is determined, is it, you know, when is it going to occur? Is it right after school? Is it midday? We've been a lot of conversations, so we have a more um, detail to come on that. So we're going to continue our conversations in the next building to be around, around groundbreaking. Um, the other piece that I also do want to mention too within the group within communications was um, a kudos to the high school team for the school opening, um, the traffic, all the work actually that everybody has done in conjunction with that. Um, it went so smoothly. Um, all the traffic great. patterns which work fantastic. We've all, any parent who has a child there has received great feedback on great. it. Um, we've seen some ancillary benefits that we <laughs> were fantastic as far as the improvement on the floor. Um, for traffic, so really a good start to kind of the, the introduction of phase one of the project to the community um, was really positive. So we thank everybody who's involved in that effort because that really makes a big difference on um, how that's, this project is represented kind of that first major step. So thank you. That was a you made that work as smoothly as it did. So, what did I miss for communication? And talked to Clown. All right. Um, professional partnership. We have not engaged. I'm, not, I'm wondering if are we ever going to engage in professional partnership? So do we again? I don't know if there's anybody, any other. I mean, it would depend on, right? So the only other really third party is you're going to have uh, environmental uh, aspect of you, and then you're going to have. Um, Materials testing uh, for the next phase, and you'll have um, some disorders we can talk about yeah, later. So, yes, but not for a while. Not for a while. Okay. All right. So, we'll take it off until we have to have a engage, right? Um, the next item is financial report. Um, we don't have an update for tonight, but the invoice that you approve will be on our next one. I distributed it. And just to that point, too, uh, it was mentioned, Mark did mention the finance committee, kind of the re engaging of the finance committee. We did mention this last time, the building committee as well. So, since there will be so much um, work involved in reviewing invoices and looking at, at financials, um, we have brought the finance committee um, forward again to do some preliminary reviews, ask questions, do analysis on that work up front before it comes to the full committee, um, which is probably the best course of action. So. Um, when we move on in the agenda, you will see um, invoices for approval and just know that those have been, uh, well, specific ones, not all of these. Right? No, they, have. they all have. All of them have gone through the, the finance committee um, for review and questions and updates. So, just another uh, point in the process for validation uh, is, is the practice for us. So. And to that point, you will see in the packet, I know it's a little bit premature, but CSG has put together um, kind of some more information. So you'll see like a summary sheet of all the invoices and then a, a cover sheet for each invoice um, to kind of make it uh, a little bit easier to read. But we have, excuse me, a lot of invoices coming. So then it's just a little change in, in how they're delivered. Any questions? 
Their second invoice that we received on the enabling plan. We'll probably get two more. We'll get a final, and then we'll get a, um, a retainage requisition. So for, for we'll release the retainage that we've held back uh, once the work is complete. So there'll be probably two more invoices there. Uh, IES had submitted uh, uh, for their invoice of the document review. That's our um, commissioning agent, uh, and then there's the two standard CSG invoices. Um, next next month we'll see, but we have a few come in a few days after the meeting. So TSAP's invoices and a few others. So we'll get that scheduled now that it's not just before the building committee meeting. It's now before the finance committee, which needs to review before the building committee. So we'll see a couple of days or maybe. But um, we'll we'll you know we'll get the process uh, uh, more fluid as as we we go into the months ahead. So finance committee had an opportunity to review them, ask questions. Uh, See the schedule of values, and we can do review of um, you know cost um, timeline, cost analysis of where we are at the date, and so uh, and then looking at full budgets. So. Any questions about that, or kind of your detail time what you're seeing there? All right. Uh, so why don't we ask for a vote? You're all in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to go ahead and add um, one additional motion um, to the agenda. And this is in regard to that meeting. While we have everybody here, um, why don't we go ahead and ask for a motion to add a October 19th meeting to the um, building committee schedule. I don't believe we need to add that time. So this would just be for the building committee, same uh, five o'clock start, but just on October 19th. Keeping that 12. For now, yeah. 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 It's, it's easier to add and then cancel, but we know let's have that one reserved just to be on the same set for timing. All right. Can I get a motion to add that to the schedule? Motion. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Fine. Yeah. In that same vein, um, we'll want to talk about next year's calendar. So that we can incorporate these finance committee reviews yeah. early and enough to get that, that, yeah, get that process correct. So, why don't we? I think that's something we're talking about the next yep. meeting. Yes, we've got a calendar uh, approved, and we had talked about because we do it every other week, which sometimes we meet the first week of the month, sometimes we meet yeah. the second. So, I think we wanted to go to what? First and third. First and third, and third. Yeah, of, every month. Uh, of every month, kind of standardize that, but we'll put some dates around it. Um, that way we can meet appropriately for the finance committee to get everything settled. So and that puts us off cycle with the time of You guys are second. You're second or four. Uh, it's two second. You want to look at that schedule? See if you can decide Which I think is fine. Yeah. Well, it's been going back and forth. Right? It doesn't matter. Okay. It's fine. And we'll still keep um, our I will still put that forward with the five o'clock um, start time, four o'clock communications. Obviously, we will, if there's ever an opportunity for us to have to go virtual, um, we will certainly make sure that's communicated ahead of time. But the hybrid option is also will continue to be available to us as well. Schedule now to December remains the same. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Except, Except for that one. This one edition for right now. Correct. Um, and we'll see, like I said, we'll evaluate based. Laura, let us know as we're we'll moving forward if there's something else. Yeah, we'll, we'll work the finance committee out for the next, you know, for October, November, December. Okay. All 
All right. Any other thoughts, questions? Anything else this evening? All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. We will adjourn at 5 30. Not all. <laughs> <laughs>